So today's read aloud is on lesson seven. It's called The Battle After the War. Our vocabulary for today, the first word is astonished. And this is a noun. I'm not sure why my vocabulary cards didn't come up correctly today, but we'll go with what I have. <laughs> so the first word is astonished. That's a noun. This is feeling or showing great surprise or wonder. Example, John Tell was astonished to see a rainbow after the storm. So some variations are astonish, astonishing, or astonishes. Our next word, retreated. This is a noun. To move backward to avoid danger. Example, the kitten retreated to his basket when he heard thunder. Some variations are retreat, retreats, or retreating. Strategically, this is an adjective. Of or relating to a general plan that is created to achieve a goal. Example, the dog was sitting strategically under the table in hopes that some scraps may fall to the floor. A variation is strategic. Truce, this is a noun. An agreement to stop fighting, arguing, etc. for a certain period of time. <laughs> Example, the siblings called a truce and stopped tickling each other. So let's think back of some of the uh, pictures that we saw in the read aloud. I'll show you those in class. So I'll pause here. Let's think about how a man named Francis Scott Key was inspired to write a poem as he watched the battle from the Baltimore Harbor. That poem became our national anthem. So were the people of Baltimore and the army prepared this time for the British attack? What did they do? Did the U.S. soldiers at Fort McHenry surrender when the British attacked? What did the British do? So today's read aloud is titled The Battle After the War. This is a story about the Battle of New Orleans. So I want you to predict why this read aloud is titled The Battle After the War. So please listen carefully to the information about General Andrew Jackson in the Battle of New Orleans and see if your predictions about why this read aloud is called The Battle After the War is correct. Grandfather Lafitte, JP and Adele settled back around the table on their grandfather's front porch. As they shared a plate full of chocolate chip cookies and some cold lemonade, they relaxed in the warm sunshine. The ginger barn cat was purring, curled up beneath the table. The War of 1812 was not quite over, started Grandfather Lafitte as he took a sip of his lemonade. There was to be one more big victory for us. Remember, the final part of the British three-part plan was to attack the city of New Orleans and gain control of the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River is one of the world's largest one of the world's largest rivers, or major rivers. The Mississippi River system is the fourth longest in the world. So this is New Orleans, or New Orleans, however you want to say that. And then this is the Mississippi River. It runs all the way up there, if you can see the cursor. So Mississippi River, New Orleans. So was New Orleans an important port too, asked JP, who had already devoured three cookies and was now eating an apple. It certainly was. It was one of the largest cities in America, and it was an important trading center. Farmers could ship their goods down the Mississippi River to the port of New Orleans. Ships transported these goods far and wide. Not only that, the Ohio, Missouri, and Tennessee rivers feed into the Mississippi River. That meant that farmers as far away as Ohio, as well as settlers moving west, had a way of sending and receiving goods. Important supplies could be taken all across the United States on what was essentially a series of water highways. So today, how are the things we need transported from place to place? Oh, I see, said JP. If the British captured New Orleans, they would be able to stop that trade. That would not have been good for the farmers or the merchants. You're absolutely right, said Grandfather Lafitte, cracking a proud smile at his grandson. This was a battle we could not afford to lose. A man named General Andrew Jackson was asked to put together an army and go to New Orleans to defend it. And that's exactly what he did. 
Actually, Jackson's army was a ragtag group of militiamen from Louisiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Ragtag means made up of different people or things and not organized or put together well. He had some trained soldiers, but to help him, or excuse me, but to help them, he recruited anyone and everyone he could. Farmers, Native Americans, African Americans, even pirates. Pirates! exclaimed Adele. You said pirates were part of the story. Granddad, is this when you tell us about pirates? Almost, Grandfather Lafitte replied. But first I want to tell you about the Battle of New Orleans. Then I'll have plenty to tell you about pirates. Now, during the summer of 1814, the British started building up a larger invasion force. With the Napoleonic Wars almost over, the British had more soldiers to spare. They now had more than twice as many soldiers as the Americans. How could we beat such a huge army? asked J.P., astonished. The word astonished, astonished means to feel great surprise or wonder. Listen and I'll tell you all about it, urged Grandfather Lafitte. In early December of 1814, General Andrew Jackson arrived in New Orleans. People were in a state of panic. The British Navy had already begun to destroy some of the city's defenses. Then, just two days before Christmas, General Jackson got word that the British Army was only eight miles from New Orleans. He ordered the construction of entrenchments or defensive walls across the swampy land around the city. He got as many people as he could to dig these defensive walls. In which other American city were entrenchments built during the war? Do you remember? It was Baltimore. That was smart of him, said J.P. As it turned out, it really was, replied Grandfather Lafitte. Over the next several days and weeks, there were many mil military encounters between both sides. However, the deciding battle, which became known as the Battle of New Orleans, took place in early January in a wooded area south of the city. The British were moving toward the city, but what they did not know was that some of Andrew Jackson's best soldiers were strategically positioned along the defensive walls that had been built around the city. Strategically re refers to something done to achieve a specific goal. These soldiers were armed with much better weapons than the British soldiers had. Andrew Jackson's men also had about a dozen cannons, like the one shown here in a react or <laughs> like the, so sorry I'll start over Andrew Jackson's men also had about a dozen cannons like the one shown here in a reenactment did the British know that they were outgunned asked JP no they didn't at least not at first replied grandfather Lafitte one group of British soldiers advanced at dawn across an open field between the Mississippi River and an area of swampland Unfortunately for the British, their commanding officer did not survive that effort. Without a leader to take the commanding officer's place, there was a great deal of confusion on the battlefield. Before long, the British, British soldiers realized that they were in trouble. Did they surrender? inquired Adele. What do you think will happen next? Yes, essentially, agreed Grandfather Lafitte. By this time, hundreds of British soldiers had been lost or injured. The British had no choice. They raised a white flag. So the white flag is an internationally recognized signal for surrender or giving up. As the smoke cleared, the firing stopped. It seems that one British officer even stepped forward and offered his sword to a U.S. commanding officer as a sign of truce. So a truce is an agreement between sides to stop fighting. Overall, compared to the British, we lost very few soldiers in the Battle of New Orleans. Or the Battle of New Orleans. The British retreated but they stayed in their encampment near the battlefield for several more days. Retreated means to back away from danger. No more shots were fired by either side. Eventually, the British withdrew their ships and sailed away. The Battle of New Orleans was perhaps our greatest victory, but it was not the last Battle of the War of 1812. The last battle was in February 1815 at Fort... Not sure if that's Bowyer or Boyer, at the entrance of the Mobile Bay near what is now Alabama. The British won that battle, and they were considering another attack on New Orleans, but before they did, they received the news that a peace treaty had been signed in Europe. The war was officially over. I don't understand, Grandad, said J.P. Did you say the war was already over, but both sides were still fighting? How could that be? asked Adele. Well, I'll explain, said Grandfather Lafitte. 
The previous September, after the Battle of Baltimore, both sides began to work on a peace treaty. That peace treaty was eventually signed on Christmas Eve, December 24, 1814. But back then, news traveled very, very slowly. So remember, the Battle of New Orleans was after Christmas. The news of the peace treaty did not reach the troops in time to prevent the Battle of New Orleans or the attack on Fort Bower. Or Boy Bowyer. <laughs> That's a word I'm not really sure how to pronounce. Fort Bowyer or Boyer. So do you think that communication is better today than it was back then? What kinds of communication exist today that didn't exist back then? That's too bad, said Adele. Those soldiers wouldn't have been hurt if they'd known about the peace treaty, said Adele. Yes, that's true, replied Grandfather Lafitte. The Battle of New Orleans was important, though, because it showed the United States was not willing to give up its freedom. Many people say the War of 1812 was America's second war for independence. After that, Great Britain accept, accepted the United States as a free, independent country. The two countries have never fought each other in another war again. Today, they are friends or allies. What are allies? asked Adele. That is a good question, replied Grandfather. Allies are countries that support and help each other in a war. So now the United States and Great Britain support and help each other. So were your predictions about why the read aloud is titled The Battle After the War correct? Why was this read aloud title The Battle After the War? Why did the British want to gain control of the Mississippi River? Why was General Andrew Jackson's army such a mixture of different kinds of soldiers and people? Two days before Christmas, the British army was just eight miles from the city of New Orleans. What did General Jackson do when he heard this? Where did the Battle of New Orleans take place? Was the Battle of New Orleans the last battle in the War of 1812? In the read aloud you heard, the Americans won against such a large army? Asked J.P. astonished. Say the word astonished with me. Astonished. The word astonished means that someone finds it very difficult to believe something because it is so incredible. I watched, astonished, as my friend jumped into the pool with his shoes on. Have you ever felt astonished? So what's the word we've been talking about? Astonished. So now I'm going to read several sentences. If you find the statement hard to believe and you would be astonished, give me a thumbs up. If you do not find the statement hard to believe and you would not be astonished, give me a thumbs down. I saw an elephant sitting on a bench in a park. It was dark during the daytime and sunny at night. It was snowing when I woke up one morning. I saw three cats and a dog flying over the Empire State Building. We saw a blue whale in the river. <laughs>